Pokemon threw us for a loop yet again. It's just been curveball after curveball. Not that I mind though. It keeps things interesting. Everyone thought that we were getting a black and white related game. All the signs pointed to it after all. But the Pokemon company said, nope, here's Kalos. Have fun. What? Pokemon Legend Z to A hit us harder than a truck in your average Isekai. And I'm all for it. Look, I also wanted Legends Kiram or Black and White 3, but this is just as cool, if not more. The last Legends game was great, so I think we can assume this one will be as well. Also, if you guys aren't aware, Pokemon X and Y were actually planned to get sequels when they first released. Yes, like full-on sequels, but they were scrapped. We know this because of a data leak, so I think Z to A will be the redemption that Kalos deserves. Some people are actually mad about it though, but I don't see why. This is the best possible outcome. I have a ton of nostalgia for X and Y. Something about Generation 6 was just really nice. The games, while not the best, were solid enough. This was the first time we got to have a mainline Pokemon game in 3D, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were amazing remakes. Mega Evolution brought back a ton of old fans, and the new fans were excited to get to experience Hoenn for the first time. It just felt like everyone was united, and this is about one of the only times I can remember where the Pokemon community wasn't divided. I know people really wanted something Generation 5 related, but we're fine without it. And I mean, come on. Did you really want to see a repeat of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Just let them cook up whatever they're doing. Also, I just want to take the time to talk about the logo. I really like the logo a lot. Just look at it. It looks so fucking sick. We have this cool looking Zygarde Z with the little hexagons Cells. And then we have this ominous looking A with these scale looking patterns, which could be hinting at a new legendary, but we'll see within due time. The Legends Arceus logo had this negative filter over it, which I thought looked cool. But now we have this muted color scheme for the Pokemon logo, which I like just as much. It's really sleek and it fits the theme. But here's the question everyone's asking. What does the A mean? The name of the game is Pokemon Z A or Pokemon Z to A. And I'll explain in a bit why I've been calling it Z to A. Obviously the Z is there because of Zygarde, but where where does the A come in? Some people are claiming that the A stands for Arceus, but we just got an Arceus game, so there's no way. I'm thinking that maybe it doesn't actually represent a Pokemon at all. Maybe it's supposed to be like, we started from Z and now we're at A, starting from the bottom and working your way up to the top, Z to A, reflecting the development of Lumio City. It sounds stupid, but that's all I can come up with for now. And I just think the hyphen's weird to add. Like did they really need to add the hyphen? I guess in some cases you don't really pronounce it like Spider-Man, it's not really spider to man or spider dash man sounds stupid but we'll see eventually for now though i'm just gonna keep calling it pokemon z to a also it makes people mad for some reason there's probably gonna be some new legendary that starts with an a if it is a pokemon and it most likely is because again the scales apparently this game takes place entirely in lumio city and some people are saying that that's a deal breaker claiming that pokemon is supposed to be about exploring the world but do you really want to explore a world that looks like Bruh. scarlet and violet i can hear a nail drop in this vast open void on a more serious note, I feel like this is a really refreshing take on Pokemon. It'll feel like you're just a trainer living your life in the city, and I feel like it's sorta of gonna be like Yokai Watch. There's still a ton of places you can go catch Pokemon, but various things are gonna happen throughout the city, and you just gotta help out in whatever way you can. Say someone lost their billet. Oh no. You explore the city trying to find them and take them back to their trainer. Quests like that. I just don't think it's gonna be as claustrophobic as many people are making it out to be. It's gonna be way bigger than what it was like in X and Y, so I think it's gonna be fine. And maybe this is just a me thing because I live in the middle of nowhere, but I've always admired cities and the tall buildings in them. Something about them is just really appealing to me. I can bet you'll grow attached to the city and slowly learn the layout, not even needing a map to get around eventually. It kind of reminds me of Shibuya and Persona 5, or Shibuya and the World Ends With You, or Shibuya and Mario and Sonic the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Yeah, Japan really likes Shibuya. The real question people are asking is if this game will take place in the past, future, or just be modern. Legends Arceus took place in the past, so you would assume that Z to A would take place in the past too. I mean, the name Legends implies that it's something far in the past, but I'm not so sure. I mean, there's a whole city being redeveloped, which implies that the city has already been built and that they're just remodeling it. Plus, the whole trailer theme is this wireframe aesthetic as opposed to the old-timey scroll-themed trailer we got for Legends Arceus. Granted, that could just be blueprints, but you never know. I think if this game does take place in the past, it won't be as far back as Legends Arceus, I think it'll be around the time of the Industrial Revolution. I did do some digging so that we can reach a more conclusive answer though. In the trailer, we see this made up language in the world of Pokemon, so I examined it a little because I'm insane. 
Anyways, that's not the point. When comparing it to the signs in Legends Arceus, the language is completely different. And yeah, that might just have to do with them being miles apart physically, but the entire world of Pokemon uses Pokedollars, the same language, and communicates with other regions. Plus, it's just a game. So I don't think it would be that attentive to details giving different languages to different locations. But the language used in Legends Arceus is nowhere to be found in the modern Pokemon games. However, when I compared the made-up language to the text we see in the Scarlet or Violet book, we have a lot of similar letters which could mean that this takes place during the modern era, or it's in the future. I think it's going to be modern since you're able to see streetlights and stuff, but I could be completely wrong, so take this with a grain of salt. Also, this could mean completely nothing, but it does say a new adventure awaits in Lumio City. For Legends Arceus, it didn't really say anything about it being new. It just said something along the lines of explore the land of the past or whatever. A lot of grasping at straws here, but that's just what happens when you're giving nothing but a few blueprints and a logo. The hell am I supposed to do with this? Oh, it's upside down. They also show a piece of adhesive tape. And I don't know when tape was invented, but I don't think we'd see that during the Legends Arceus era. The music choice also just doesn't seem that old timey, but we'll see when we get more information. The game is apparently gonna focus on humans and Pokemon coexisting in the city together. And I've always really liked that idea. Pokemon and humans living alongside each other and helping out in whatever way they can helps world building so much. Say you have an ice cream shop. You have an ice type Pokemon helping you out, making sure that it stays cold. Or say you have a flower shop and you have cute Cute little grass types tending to the plants every now and then. It really makes the Pokemon world feel more alive and fleshed out. However, if this game does take place in the past somehow, that not only means we will get to see a bit of Kalos's history, but we potentially might get to see the Lumio City Ghost Girl. All the pieces are there after all. Lumio City, Ghost, Past, make it happen. But you guys are probably more interested in AZ and the ultimate weapon. And guys, as much as I want to see that too, we're not going to see it. That was over 3,000 years ago. Legends Arceus didn't even go back that far. And look at how developed the city is. Again, they have street lights. We might get more info about it, but as far as a war goes or AZ, it's not happening. Plus, if there was a war going on, I don't think we'd stay the whole game in Lumio City. It just wouldn't work. I'm sorry. At the end of the trailer, we get the reveal that Mega Evolutions are coming back. Oh my god, this is what we've been waiting for! Who doesn't love Mega Evolutions? So what if it's a gimmick? It was cool! Not like Dynamaxing. I think it was probably fulfilling someone's sick fetish. It was always really cool to see what's essentially a fourth stage evolution, or seeing a Pokemon that's pretty much irrelevant receive a Mega Evolution. What I'm hoping for is Mega Flygon or Mega Dragonite. Flygon was supposed to receive one in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but they couldn't come up with a design that was cool enough. And it's been around a decade now, so they better have settled on a design by now. And I want one for Dragonite because I feel like the Mega Snow name would be really funny. Dragonite, I, I mean, come on, they have to. And I know people are sick and tired of Charizard receiving treatment, but like, it's one of their main mascots, guys. He's iconic. I feel like a Mega Charizard Z would look really cool. I'm not exactly sure what it would even look like. Maybe it's an Ice Dragon, I don't know, but I'm sure they'll figure something out. Same with Mega Mewtwo Z. I've always liked Mega Mewtwo Y more than X. X just seems kind of weird to me, so I think they can do something cool. Also, side note, I, for the life of me, can't find where I got this information, but I'll just mention it and someone in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong. But weren't Mega Stones man-made just using the energy from the ultimate weapon? Because like, if they were around for thousands of years, Mewtwo shouldn't have a Mega Stone. And the fact that there is a Mega Mewtwo Stone implies that these can be man-made. So if they are man-made, I think that adds more credibility to this game taking place in the present or future. But again, I could be completely wrong. The Kalos starters kind of got robbed of Mega Evolutions because the Kanto Trio got them instead. And since Mega Evolution was introduced in Kalos, you would think the Kalos starters would be next in line, but nope. Generation 3 came and stole the spotlight. So maybe now we could get some Kalos Megas. Yeah, Greninja has Battle Bond, which lets him become Ash Greninja, but does that really count? No, it doesn't. I'm kind of worried though, because in the last Legends game, the starters were completely different, so they're probably going to do the same thing again, which means that there's a chance that the Kalo starters are going to get their spotlight stolen yet again. Or, best case scenario, both sets can receive a Mega Evolution. And speaking of the starters, who are we going to be receiving? It's fair to assume that the Kanto and Hoenn starter trios aren't going to be starters since they already got Mega Evolutions, and Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott got their time in Legends Arceus, so that only leaves us with a handful of starters. I've seen great arguments for Snivy, Piplup, and Scorbunny, since Superior is royalty, Empoleon was based on Napoleon, who was French, and Scorbunny because soccer is popular in France. That one's kind of a stupid reason, but I see the vision, but I'm not going to use logic. I'm just going to blindly choose Snivy, Totodile, and Chinchar. It just seems like it, you know? I just feel it. And if I'm right, 
That would be hilarious. I don't even like these starters that much, but hey, I guess that'll just make choosing just as hard, if not more. In X and Y, Team Flare was the evil team. So what role are they going to play in this game? Well, in Legends Arceus, Team Galactic was the Galaxy team, and they were actually the good guys. So we can probably expect something similar out of Team Flare. I've been seeing the name Team Quasar thrown around along with this little logo we can see on the development plan. So maybe the Team Flare equivalent are the ones helping develop the city, but then who's the twist villain? Of course, there's some mysteries that need to be addressed in this game, like the Kalos power plant that we never got to access, Southern Kalos, AZ's Floet, and AZ himself. But again, that whole AZ ordeal was like 3,000 years ago, and he only came back 3,000 years later. So unless this game takes place directly after X and Y, I don't think we'll be seeing AZ anytime soon. We could maybe see his Floet though as just an event or something. The Kalos power plant along with Southern Kalos are probably not going to be in this game since we're limited to just Lumio City, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. There's a ton of people saying that the region is called So you or something like that, but either you guys are kidding or you just didn't pay attention. The Pokemon Presents starts with a bunch of unknown misspelling Pokemon Presents, and Pikachu is like, guys, what the hell, we rehearsed this. So later in the trailer, they mess up again. Instead of spelling see you, they spelled so you. It's nothing more than a joke. There's even a little question mark at the end. They're trying their best, okay? Some people are genuinely convinced that this is the new region name though, but I can assure you, it's most likely just Kalos, and if it's not, it sure as hell isn't so you. With the return of Zygarde, of course means that we're going to be collecting Zygarde cells again. Oh boy. It's probably going to be similar to the little wispy spirit things in Legends Arceus, or they could just make it part of the progression in some way. Like you defeat a boss and you get like, I don't know, 10. And then you can upgrade the city. Kind of like Clash of Clans. I don't know. I'm really excited to see what this game will be about exactly. There's so much that we don't know, which makes it all the more interesting. Just what could they be hiding from us? The fact that they didn't release a Pokemon game last year or this year is making me hope that they've been spending their time making this game. People really didn't like the yearly releases of Pokemon games since that left them unpolished, so I'm hoping that with this extra time they're receiving, they'll yield better results. This is most likely going to be the last Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch, so I'm hoping they end off on a banger. People loved Legends Arceus, so I'm really happy that they've taken the feedback and decided to give us a new Legends title, and I'm just really happy that they're trying something new for Pokemon. I love innovation. It just makes me happy that they're stepping out of their comfort zone to do something we've never seen before. That's how masterpieces are made. If they keep giving us the same slop over and over again, it's never going to improve. But by changing one thing at a time, that slop will slowly become something great. I know I tend to bash the Pokemon company and Game Freak a lot, but when they do actually try, it means a lot to me as a Pokemon fan. Of course, I'm saying all of this before seeing any gameplay and all of my expectations could be shattered the moment we actually see the game, but I have hope. Not high hope, but hope. I feel like they've got this. If you like hearing me speculate and theorize, go watch my Legends Kiram video, even if we aren't getting Legends Kiram, it was still pretty interesting and fun to think about. Anyways, subscribe, like the video, comment, follow my socials, please don't age like milk. Bye everyone!